Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video I will be showing you how I made this uh, tool holder um, clamping fixture. It's a, a holder that um, you can tighten the collet chuck on for uh, fixturing your tools. I don't have one currently so I need one and I thought this would be the perfect project to try out the new milling machine so I will be making a few parts and uh, I will be showing you how I make these in this video so let's start so to start with the first piece of this assembly I will be making the main body of this holder and for that I need to cut off a big piece of aluminum of a piece of stock and because I'm not very gifted at using the hacksaw I will have to square it up in the mill and this also gives me the ability to then machine the part on the milling machine which uh, I will have to do <laughs> obviously um, so I start by side milling this part to get uh, it to the total length After that I flipped it around and did the same thing to the other side and also um, cut it to the to the total length that it has to be. And then after I cut it to length I then uh, used the last position that uh, the machine was at to uh, take uh, half of the diameter of the tool. It's an 11mm 11 mil 11 tool. So uh, I'm 5.5 millimeters away from that face um, on the left side, and I use that to zero the machine and the on the uh, x-axis and on the y-axis I um, I used uh, I did it just by uh, by looking at the part with a with a pointy with a pointy uh, tool. I'm starting to. Uh, cut the, the big hole um, the big square hole in the, in the middle of the part for the tool holder um, I'm using a big the biggest drill that I uh, have to uh, get rid of uh, as much material as possible so um, uh, cleaning it up with the end mill will be a easier job and here I uh, was actually in the high gear for the machine so it really has a lot of torque it sounds nice it cuts nice it's it's really just a, a beautiful experience to work uh, with this milling machine so far I have, uh, I have not had uh, any problems Now switching to the same 11mm end mill and with some uh, calculations um, for the coordinates I'm now just milling the total depth or the, the whole depth of, of the part. Um, it was a lot so I had to uh, go pretty slow but uh, the machine handled it. Um, yes it made some sounds <laughs> but <laughs> um, it's, it's understandable that it uh, sounded like that when uh, cutting 10 or uh, I think 12 millimeters deep in uh, one pass. I broke out the middle part so it wouldn't uh, fly somewhere when cutting the last side. And now I'm just uh, going around again and taking a, a finishing pass to get it to, to final size. I am um, on all of these uh, passes on all the milling operations I'm in general just uh, milling uh, climb milling um, because the machine actually has ball screws and uh, they don't have any backlash so you can mill uh, you can climb mill which is a uh, gives you a way better surface uh, 
on on this machine and also uh, the machine sounds uh, nicer when climb milling and the uh, use less force on the hand wheels so it's just nicer but you you can't do that if you have a, a conventional machine with, with uh, trapezoidal uh, lead screws because then uh, the machine can uh, like jump forward when you when the backlash gets taken out by the end mill then you break the part or the end mill um, which is nice so you have to uh, mill conventionally on these machines but uh, on this one you have ball screws so you don't have to this would also be a great machine to use for a CNC conversion because it already has the ball screws um, but I'm not gonna do that because I already have a CNC mill CNC milling machine um, that I built myself. If you want to see uh, videos about that, there are a few on my channel where I am using the machine. <laughs> Now with the first part finished, we're gonna go to the keys that are uh, gonna stop the, the tool holder from actually spinning when you want to tighten or uh, untighten uh, this part or the, the, the knot. This is gonna be in fast forward because uh, if you want to see a more detailed uh, look on how I made these, um, I showed them in the last video where I uh, like reviewed the machine and put it up. So if you're interested in more details on, on this part or on these parts, um, you can go and watch that video. Now that we have these parts done, we can uh, continue and go to the next part, which will be the ground plate, the stabilization plate on the bottom. Um, here I drew it with, with a circular hole for, for the small diameter of the, of the tool holder that you can see to the left. The big hole in the upper part is for the top of the taper and the small one will be for the small diameter um, on the bottom of the taper but I will also have to make it square because I don't have a drill that uh, has that size or a bit above I just have uh, like 15 millimeter drills and this uh, 17 millimeter diameter uh, bore that I would have to make 17 or 17.5 or 18 but I don't have that, so I'm just gonna make a square hole again. On the milling machine, I just uh, squared up this part by uh, putting it in uh, horizontally, and then milling over the top to get it to to the to the height or the, the thickness. This leave, le left a very nice surface finish. I milled it down to uh, 25 millimeters. And then I side milled it also to to length to the length. And then I uh, again used the biggest drill that I had to first uh, pre-drill the center hole, so I wouldn't have to remove a lot of the of the end mill. And then I uh, did the same thing as with the big hole, just uh, milling a square. But here I didn't go uh, in two passes, I uh, directly uh, did the entire thing in one pass because it uh, doesn't really match. <laughs> so I just uh, saved a bit of time with that. And it came out uh, fairly nice uh, looking. Um, I don't have any complaints about that. And then I uh, drilled 
the two holes and then I put the small chamfer on it. And uh, I think this part came out uh, very nice. And now with the last part done, we can start to assemble it. Um, and you can see how uh, everything goes together. You have the, the drive dogs or the, the stopping dogs on, in this case. Um, and then you have these uh, standoffs. They are like standard uh, electrical standoffs or something like that. And here I first uh, tried it out. It's a very tight fit. It would have been a, a better idea to, to leave a bit more <laughs> space on everything. But uh, it's also quite nice um, if everything is uh, accurate and then with the, with the lower part in it uh, still fits together it actually fits uh, very nicely and uh, I think this is very awesome um, if I would uh, change something on this I would uh, put like a guide in for the whole length so uh, I wouldn't have to like try to get it uh, in on the bottom to to fit, but that it would uh, then just be guided to the to the hole on the bottom. Now I can install it on the milling machine. Uh, I firstly installed it with just two screws. But uh, the screw, the, these two screws were uh, not enough to hold the entire thing uh, sturdy when tightening it. So I made a, a wood bracket that uh, really clamps down. And now I can uh, tighten the tools. And it's uh, very convenient. It's uh, perfectly placed and uh, it's very useful. And with that, thank you for watching and until the next video.